Sometimes, popular opinion can create facts. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. I think it's time we let reality dictate our facts. We were all taught that the Earth is a sphere, that this was an undisputed fact one science had found to be undeniable through testing and scientific scrutiny. Then we were taught that our ancestors and humanity had spent thousands of years in confusion, hopeless superstition, and inadequate comprehension, which led to the Dark Ages, a period that could have spelled the end of humanity had it not been for the advent of the scientific revolution that sprung up in the 16th and 17th century. It was in this scientific revolution that the ideas of the scientific method came into play, without which our current levels of knowledge might never have been attained. However, some people in the world still feel that these so-called facts, if they are in fact facts, should stand up to the scrutiny of testing. If yesterday's fact fails today's experiment, it must be tomorrow's former fact or science's previous incorrect conclusion. The scientific method claims to be a systematic and logical approach to discovering how things work. It is the body of knowledge accumulated through the discoveries of all things. Science is the knowledge of something based on demonstrable and reproducible data. The scientific method dictates that we should collect measurable empirical evidence in an experiment related to a hypothesis in the form of an if-then statement, the results aiming to support or contradict a theory. Here are the steps of the scientific method. First, make an observation, state your purpose. Second, ask questions, gather info and do your research. Third, form a hypothesis. Fourth, test that hypothesis. Fifth, analyze the data and draw conclusions. And six, reproduce the experiment. No reproducibility, no science. Our observation and our purpose. Despite what we are told and taught, several observations must be noted in regards to the curvature of the Earth. Number one, the horizon is not curved and rises with the observer. Second, the stars appear to make circles in the night sky for everyone on Earth. How is this possible on a sphere? Third, the Earth does not seem to be spinning by any test done on Earth. Four, the Earth does not seem to be flying through space at breakneck speeds. Fifth, the distances that would include a curvature do not seem to show one. Sixth, no real pictures or videos of the Earth exist from space. Our next step was to ask questions. Gather info. We did research, and there is in fact no way to test or prove that the Earth is spinning. From there we began to ask questions and realized that the answers we got were mostly in the form of name calling and threats being referred to as idiots or retarded, ancient or stupid. We also had many people point us in several directions that did not jive with actual results, such as asking us to look at the way water goes down toilets or drains in the northern and southern hemisphere. Research showed that this goes down the same way and has nothing to do with the hemisphere of the Earth. The axis of the Earth points to the celestial north star, or Polaris, and as the Earth speeds along in its rotation and orbit of the Sun, while the Sun orbits the galaxy and while the galaxy orbits the universe, somehow, in that 11 plus billion mile journey throughout the year, the axis always remains pointed at Polaris and has done so throughout Earth's recorded history. For these reasons, as well as several others, we began to doubt the curvature of the Earth. In our searches, I found two methods of calculating the curvature between two spots on Earth and this being a preliminary test, we will be using these formulas, but please take note that they are approximate. One method using the Pythagorean theorem dictates that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 
And from that, and knowing that the curvature is a parabola, we can devise a simplified equation of 8 times the distance in miles squared equals inches of curvature. Also, using the distance to the horizon formula of 1.23 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, we can get the inverse equation if given the distance to the horizon in miles that the height in feet that the required item needs to be in order to be seen is the distance in miles squared and then divided by 1.513. Quite a few people have stated that despite this Pythagorean theorem, that we need to minus an additional mile from any total distance. We feel that after using both of these equations, that that is not completely necessary. Many people were saying that if it was four miles, you needed to subtract the first mile and actually do the equation using three miles. The reason I don't think you need to do that is because it is correct that it's 8 inches of curvature in 1 mile because 8 times 1 squared, which is 1, 8 times 1 equals 1. If you had to minus the first mile, then 8 times 2 miles squared, which is 8 times 2 squared, so 8 times 4 is 32 inches, which is the correct curvature for 2 miles. If you minus 1, as many people are asking us to do, 8 times 2 minus 1 would be 8 times 1 which again would be 1 squared is 1, 8 times 1 equals 8 inches. So therefore you'd be saying that the curvature of 1 mile is 8 inches and the curvature of 2 miles is 8 inches, which we know that is not correct. However, because it does not appear that there's any curvature in 10 miles, or even 20, we feel comfortable in minusing that 1 mile from the distance, and we'll call that an margin of error in favor of the curvature. In the spirit of science, and the scientific method, and not holding on to any dogmas or tradition or preconceived and absolute facts, even though untested, we would appreciate anybody who feels that our math is in any way incorrect with contacting us or leaving a comment with what the correct math should be so that we can update our math for the next test. The original hypothesis stated, if the Earth was a sphere with a circumference of 24,901 miles, and an average radius of 3,959 miles. Then a laser shot from one foot above sea level across a four mile body of water from one side of the seashore to the other should not be able to be seen at less than nine feet above sea level on the opposite side. So we had gathered all the data and we had the location so we were ready for the tests. Unfortunately, the fog was quite thick and we were unable to shoot the boats on the horizon, and we were unable to shoot the long distance pictures of Santa Cruz from Monterey. Add to that a late sunset, and a dead battery, and a dropped live feed, and you've got a bad first test. Now, when you drop your live feed, uh, just to let you know, you really shouldn't sit on the beach discussing the tests for a few hours and new ideas, or you end up getting a visit from the Monterey Police Department. Mm -hmm. So. Don't be doing that. And now a quick recap of the experiment and what went wrong and what we needed to change for round two. The original experiment was from Monterey or Pacific Grove, California, from Lover's Point. And we were attempting to shoot a 1,000 milliwatt laser across the four mile stretch to Sand City, California in a little place called Message Hill. We had tested the laser a few days before just to make sure that it shot across that distance and it looked like it was absolutely no problem. We saw it reflecting from the the hill which is uh, behind the the shore there. So we would had no issues with the length that the laser would go and it was definitely bright enough in the night sky. Uh, you can see the laser here on the screen is uh, incredibly powerful. Uh, I was able to light a match with it and go straight through electrical tape. And there you can see a little diagram from Google Earth of exactly where we were shooting. And the total distance was a little bit over four miles. It was about 4.07, I believe. So we had got there the night of the test. And as I said, fog was thick, 
so we had to wait a little bit and make sure that we got to nightfall before we tried the test. When we got around to testing, we had somebody waiting on the receiving side and they had their video camera ready in order to show where the beam hit the shore. The hypothesis or the result we were looking for was we figured since we were shooting at one foot above sea level from the Pacific Grove side that it would be impossible for that beam to hit anything below 10 feet on the opposite hill. Unfortunately, one thing that we weren't able to test on test night was when the beam hit the other side it was reported that it was about 10 feet in diameter. So the beam obviously grew uh, quite large, was something we couldn't see on test day. And so that nullified the results and we were all upset. And we're trying to think of ways as we sat there on the beach, how could we get this laser to go across and not lose its beam? Was there anything else that we had learned from the experiment that would tell us that we could get a definitive answer one way or the other. Now you can see on the screen from the zoomed in video camera what that beam looked like across the four mile ocean. And from this view you can actually see that that beam is quite large. It was so large in fact it, would, it wasn't even able to be videotaped or photographed. With such a large diameter beam, it was really starting to look like the only possible way would be for us to get a new laser with a more focused beam. Uh, nothing else seemed like it was going to work until it hit me that if I had gone to the other side... I mean, it's not just convincing me because I, I'm convinced, but I mean, for as far as video evidence, I'm wondering if the camera would be able to see the green light, especially like what you just said on the rock. Yeah. If I come in on this side of the rock and shoot the rock, Mm -hmm. and just make circles with the laser on the rock. If the camera saw that from across the water, if the camera's at water level... Yeah. So personally, I thought that the fat guy had a great idea. So I went ahead and went with it. You can see on the left side of the screen, we did away with the idea of shooting the laser across the water. And went with the idea on the right side, which was to have the camera zoom in and try to see the laser. This way we could be right at the seashore, and we thought this was a better idea. So, then came the next night, and we planned on doing the retest. This time we had the cameraman stay in the same position at the Pacific Grove uh, Lover's Point side. And we went to the Sand City Message Hill shoreside. Uh, we took with us the laser and a poster board so that we could stand that upright and we marked on the poster board different heights from 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, uh, all the way up to two and a half feet. And we also uh, reformulated our hypothesis. We had also changed the math to take the four miles down to three just to give us that little cushion and uh, lean it towards the globe side. So instead of the 10 feet curvature, we were now looking for 6 feet curvature with a 3 mile span, which was actually 4 miles. The new hypothesis stated that if the Earth is a globe or a sphere with a circumference of 24,901 miles, then at a distance at sea level of 4 miles, a camera at 3 foot high should not see anything below 3 foot on the opposite shore. So the cameraman set up his camera at sea level. The height of the tripod was 30 inches. The height of the camera was about 5 inches. So that gives us 35 inches, almost 3 feet uh, on the shooting side. You can see there. And then what he was doing is zooming in and attempting to find us uh, at the shore in Seaside. Sorry, in Sand City. Here. 
So we're gonna get down here as close as we can without getting die down waves. You can call him and see if he sees us, or I'll just sign the laser, we'll sign it in the ground or something. Yeah. I'll look for you to do laser. Okay. And I'll call him. Okay, call him and then tell him to watch me. Yeah, I showed him. Now for me, and I know I tell you guys to not believe me, so do your own tests, but uh, this test was definitely definitive. Uh, four miles and there's just no way that there is a 10 foot curve. It just isn't there, doesn't exist. Uh, I'm at the most two feet above sea level, that's maximum. Um, and I get all the way down right to sea level. Uh, Patrick is 30 inches above and he gets down uh, to a little less than that. And uh, he sees the laser with no issue, unless I shine it right on the ground, which, how would he see that? And if we add in the three-foot waves that you can clearly see, well, that says that there's no curve, no way. So I'm really thrilled about the next one. Um, we are doing 13.25 feet. And uh, I think that that, keeping it kind of quiet where it's going to be and... Uh, when it's going to be, just because I think that could be uh, something they don't want to get out, is that that's supposed to be a 100 foot drop. And it won't be there. And uh, you may call that being one sided, but I've been doing these tests and looking at everything else, and I can't help it if nothing shows globe. What can I do? I'm down at six. I'm down at six inches. So everybody can see that. And there's a little lower. Uh, a little lower. Set six inches. Yeah, right there. Um, I think you're at sea level. I'm Shine it towards, shine it towards me. I'm right up, I'm right up to the water's edge. Right up to the water's edge. Uh, it's, uh, it's below my waist. It's right at crotch level. It's higher, higher than my waist. Higher than my waist. Uh, 
not really. That's about as low as I can get. I can measure when I get back to my office. I'm still recording. See the Everybody, so Patrick says he can see fully. He zoomed, he zoomed in and he can see the full laser. And we're those waves are pretty high too, so yeah, I'm gonna try and do a little bit closer again. Yeah. yeah. But I'm pretty sure we're gonna match up the, uh, the footage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're even lower. making these guys sick. See that? That's pretty low. Okay. That's good. Wow, really? Yeah, clearly. <laughs> How about, can, can you see the green? What do you see now? Yeah, what do you see? Can you see that? You can't see anything. That's interesting. Do you see nothing now? So on the sand. Okay, so tell me when you see the green light. Tell us, he's going to tell us when he sees the light. Go a little lower. I'm gonna see if he sees it How below six. How about there? How about there? Holy fucking shit. How about there? <laughs> How about there? That's where he lost it. Right there, he lost it. So here, you see it? So probably waves are getting in the way there. You see it right here? <laughs> but not, he sees it at, here. He sees it lower than six inches. How about here? Way lower. Here. An inch. Okay. He loses it about an inch. About an inch is where he loses it. Wow. I know it's incredible. So, the results are all but conclusive. May not be 100%, but next time they will be. Uh, next test will be this week, and we are going out to a distance of 13.25 miles. And that will be a result that will not be able to be hid from. Uh, even with both parties standing completely straight up tall with no worries, camera on the tripod, um, no worries about the swells, no worries about the waves, we will zoom in with a camera and a video camera and attempt to see the laser um, against that white backboard again at about chest high, so maybe 5 feet high. At 13.25 miles, the drop of the earth should be, would be, could be, uh, about 100 feet. So... I want to hear some uh, of the reasons already that this is going to be argued about. 
But as I said, with both parties at seven to eight feet, um, as far as their elevation to sea level, uh, that still gives us uh, sixteen, you know, eighty-four feet to play with. Uh, there's no way that that will be the amount of curvature between those two locations. So we think this is the measurement that the globe defenders will cry over. Of course, we have changed our hypothesis to now include the new distance of 13.25 feet, which should yield us a 100-foot curve. And we have marked our new locations. So we're scheduling that for this week so we can get that done and put it in the books, as they say. So I'm not sure about you guys, but this was pretty definitive to me. Again, I apologize if some people weren't happy with my attempt. Uh, I've never done this before, so give a guy a break. But I do think, and I don't know about you guys, but I think it's about time. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. That we have that meeting. We may not have time for that Mickey Mouse bullshit, but we certainly have time for the Flat Earth Society. In a little discussion about why we've been lied to for 400 years. So, I want to give a special thanks to all my subscribers and those who donated to make these tests easier, more affordable. I appreciate it so much. Also, to Bob and Cami, they have been outstanding, awesome. They purchased the laser. Couldn't thank them enough. Also, thank you to Patrick Doherty. Uh, he did the camera work, the film work. And lastly, a big thank you to Eric Dubay. Eric uh, financed this test as well. And uh, for being a good guy until recently. And that's going to be about it, guys. This has been, once again, your favorite all-time YouTube channel in the history of the world, Jaronism, reminding you all to open up your mind because there's truth inside, and that means don't believe what others tell you. So one thing I noted in my Shill article on Eric Dubay's site is he was upset that I said I wasn't a 100% flat earther, and I'll say it again. You should only have a problem with me, guys, if I said I was 100% flat earther. Because that means I've closed my mind, and I haven't. Who knows what's going on? Uh, I'm just here to research it, talk about it. Let's all find it together. I'll also be coming this week with a little audio session for questions and answers. So uh, hit me up if you think that's a good idea. Plan on doing like a Google Hangout or something. I think that'd be a good way to answer some of these questions. But again, don't lie to each other and treat each other better than you would treat yourselves. Until next time, this has been Jaronism. Proving the earth's flat because it certainly ain't no globe. Peace.